Hi guys and welcome to this weekly horoscope for the first week of January 2022. It's really nice to be with you today. Thank you for joining me. I'm going to go through each day this week and we're looking at Monday the 3rd of January going through until Sunday the 9th of January 2022. I'm going to have a look at what the planets are doing, what energy they create amongst themselves and how you can use that to your advantage. And the good news here is that this looks like a really positive week. It's simple, it's uplifting, it's straightforward. We've got a lot of energy in Capricorn. Our Capricorn is an earth sign that has to do with work and getting things done. We've got the sun in Capricorn, so your conscious identity, what you're striving towards, is going to appreciate and value simplicity and things that are straightforward. We've got Venus in Capricorn, so the planet of love, beauty and creativity, wanting to express itself in some sort of practical way. And then we also have Pluto in Capricorn. Pluto is the planet of transformation and change. So the main changes I feel that are going to come in are to do with your practical circumstances. There isn't this huge kind of inner turmoil that encourages you to change or to throw everything up in the air and to start all over again. So it's pretty, it's pretty straightforward and nice and calm. I don't expect that, you know, this is the week where there are these huge bombs going off all the time in your life, complicating everything. What I looked at earlier is if there are complications, they're likely to stem from you. So I'll have a look at that in a second. Starting with Monday, the 3rd of January, then we've got the moon in Capricorn. So the moon is um, your natural default setting, I would say, in the sense of what comes natural, what's easy, what am I good at? And the moon in Capricorn says, I'm good at working. I'm good at getting things done. So let me try and do that. It conjuncts Venus and Pluto. So it sits right on top of the creative planet and the planet of change, both in Capricorn. So when a conjunction happens in astrology, the energies, they blend together. So what comes natural and easy, what comes naturally and easily, what you love and what you want to change, that's all very much going to be focused on your actual circumstances, your job, your finances, your security, your, your environment. And then it sextiles Neptune and Pisces. So that gives you the, the ability to dream and to see what these things could look like. So you see the potential in everything and the wheels are kind of turning. And if you um, see a room, for instance, that's designed a certain way, then in your mind's eye, you can immediately see how this room would be improved if you were to make some changes. So it's that kind of ability to see what isn't <laughs> and what could be through your creative efforts. The moon goes into Aquarius at 11.44 in the evening. And then the Aquarius moon conjuncts Mercury and Aquarius. So Mercury is the communication planet, the way you think and the way you see things. Aquarius is very much about invention and science and the new and the future. So the fact that you now feel aligned with information and you like to kind of brainstorm and Mercury kind of amplifying that, there's the potential in the evening here on Monday for you to have amazing ideas and to be massively inspired, to have light bulbs go off everywhere. So overall, with this... Um, Capricorn energy really dominating the day. I think you start the first Monday of the new year with a great sense of optimism and you have this easy sense of confidence. Yeah, I can do it. So sorting out work related issues, making changes to your work and getting your finances organized. That's all going to be much more straightforward than you expected initially or the way you've been anticipating it. You're likely to have good ideas floating around, especially later on in the day. Education may be something you're interested in. Um, learning something new, signing up for a new course, or if you're a teacher yourself, then you'll find um, it very easy to kind of get the curriculum together and to plan your lessons, those kind of things. If you're working with new colleagues or new students, it's a great time to introduce yourself to new people. You come across great here on Monday. So if you have the opportunity to present yourself or to introduce yourself, and it's something where you have a bit of flexibility, like you can plan it for Monday, try and do that. Because if you get the introductions out the way, yeah, you'll make a wonderful first impression here on Monday the 3rd, which bodes really well. Tuesday, the 4th of January, we've got the Aquarius moon forming a conjunction with Saturn in Aquarius. So now this shifts a little bit because the Aquarius moon is very open-minded and it's kind of like, what could we 
invent here to make the situation better. Saturn in Aquarius is much more about honoring tradition and saying this is the way we've always looked at it, this is the way we've always done it, we should continue. So there's a bit of conflict here immediately via this conjunction. Also, Uranus rules Aquarius. Uranus is chaos and eccentricity and doing things in your own special way. Saturn is very much about, you know, this is the Ministry of Defense, thank you very much, we have a way of doing things. So you may feel like you're pushing up against the rules a little bit and they're cramping your style. Um, the Aquarius moon also squares Uranus and Taurus. So that may prompt you to take out your frustration in a practical sense. So if I can't control this big institution which is breathing down my neck, then I can change what I'm doing in the next three hours. And yeah, grounding yourself or giving yourself the opportunity to let off some steam by doing some exercise or kickboxing or something, that's going to work really well. It also sextiles Chiron in Aries and Mars in Sagittarius. So the interesting thing is that you're very inspired. You have these wonderful ideas that may not conform to tradition. So maybe that's why you're feeling the resistance or some push pull, some pushback. I'm being I'm I'm, I'm being um, cramped here because these people think they know the way it's done. But I've had a new idea which I really want to try out. Why can't I do that? People are often very rigid to change, even if at other times or in other areas of their life, they're um, very open-minded because some people just think, you know, if it ain't broke, why fix it? Why play around with things? So with all of that on Tuesday, you may be thrown for a bit of a loop here. On one hand, you want to organize things and tie up loose ends. And on the other hand, you may find yourself having all of these great ideas and complicating your own life or you may even find that you complicate your own schedule by signing up for events or social things just based on a whim without really thinking how much you've already got um, on your plate. So, I mean, I, that's a minor complication. I don't think it's the worst thing in the world. And with um, Uranus and Taurus, you're organized enough to tolerate a little bit of chaos. So I think that complicating your life on Tuesday isn't necessarily a bad thing because it could lead to new opportunities, relationships, or you may just stumble onto other ways of doing things. So it's kind of the vibe I'm getting from Tuesday. It's like life happens while you're making other plans. And on Tuesday, I think good things happen while you're making other plans. So try and be a little bit more flexible and yeah, allow yourself to get off track a little bit. If someone wants your help or if you you can have a little bit of a chat after the session or whatever, then um, do that. You're gonna, you, it's going to pay off for you. On Wednesday the 5th, we've got Venus in Capricorn. So I love to work. I like to get things done. I like to be seen as reliable, consistent, as someone who fits in and follows the rules. I also want to express myself creatively in a way that's going to be acceptable and pleasing to other people, and I want to be celebrated for my work. Sextiles, Neptune and Pisces. So we've got, um, this is really interesting. Venus is the personal planet of love and beauty. Okay. And Neptune is an outer planet. And that's like love and beauty on a, on a global level. So love for humanity, the world. Venus is in Capricorn. So you like to be practical and to get things done. And Neptune in Pisces, because it's the higher kind of octave of Venus in Pisces, gives you a great appreciation for spiritual truths, what could be, what's really charming and uh, wonderful in the imagination. And it gives you this appreciation for the realms of imagination and things that aren't practical. So you're not just like a machine on vent on. <laughs> on Wednesday, you're actually super inspired and you're very sensitive and you can tap into the emotional side of things. And then with Venus and Capricorn, you're able to very delicately take action on that and be very diplomatic and sensitive and intuitive, but, but very, very, um, you, you tread very lightly and you're unlikely to say the wrong thing. So what I'm getting here is that if you've got a relationship that's very important to you and you you want it to progress or you want to alter it in some way, you want to get the friendship back or you want it to develop into something else, this is the kind of thing you can navigate very easily via this combo because 
you're so um, you, you pick up on other people's feelings and thoughts and ideas so easily. It's almost like you can read their mind. The moon enters Pisces later on in the day. So the sensitivity level is just skyrocketing here. And also inspiration via your higher self, via your gut feelings, your intuition, your dreams. They become very present and real to you. And then the Pisces moon conjuncts Jupiter in Pisces. Jupiter, the lucky planet in Pisces, expanding upon the spiritual realm. So it's kind of like you astral project into your own little fantasy world. But you keep your feet on the ground via Venus and Capricorn and you're able to bring back messages you get from that. So if you're someone who, you know, has struggled with spirituality or faith or you're an agnostic or an atheist and you're like, oh, this is just too much. I don't know what I believe. But you have some sort of niggling a thing in the back of your mind saying, well, look into it. You know, there may be something there. I think most of us have that inner prompt to say, you know, regardless of what you've been taught about religion, there's still this weird sense that there's something bigger and that I am connected. So if that's always been an area where you haven't made a lot of progress or, or found a lot of understanding, then look into that again in your own unique way, whether it's, it's um, meditation or prayer or just talking to your higher self and saying, do you know what, if there's something bigger in here, hello, can you kind of speak up? Because I want to figure it out. I want to find some bigger meaning to myself and life in the world. You'll make a lot of progress here on Wednesday. So with our watery, earthy energy, you're likely to be happy, contented and focused on the positive on Wednesday. You're in gardener mode, okay? So everything you touch is likely to grow and prosper. It's like you're channeling the spiritual energy into something tangible. So look at gardening, your health, the creative arts, relationships, all of those are supported by this energy. You may have an epiphany later on in the day if you're meditating or praying and will receive the answer to an irritating problem. And it can be a small problem, very concrete guidance, or it can be something much bigger. Oh. I understand. I had a moment recently where I went on, um, I went to see my mother for Christmas for a few days and um, I was looking out the window and looking at the mountain and there was snow on the mountain and it was kind of like looking at clouds. You know, when you see shapes in the clouds, like a ship or a duck or a candle or whatever. And in the mountain, I saw all these different faces and things. And then weirdly, I started to make a list in my mind of things that I like to do. I like this and this and this. And it was just like, wow, that's so simple. And did I know these things before? But it just kind of, the list was writing itself in my head while I was looking at the mountain. And for me, I like to read symbols, right? I love looking at the clouds and see. So the mountain thing was an experience for me with the snow. I like doing that with the tarot cards, reading the symbols and getting messages. So for me, it's almost like if my, if my eyes are sort of distracted by symbols, I can see in a practical sense, then it kind of gives me space internally to have these lists write themselves or to get guidance in. So it's not about distracting myself, but it's just about having one focus that then opens something else up. So try that. That's what worked for me. Okay, Thursday the 6th of January, we've got the Pisces moon forming a square with Mars and Sagittarius. So this isn't the most comfortable because water, when it's heated up, it starts to evaporate, right? And if you throw a bucket of water onto a fire, it goes out and becomes damp and out. So the Pisces moon is everything spiritual and intuitive. It's like the high priestess in the tarot. And Mars in Sagittarius is um, a warrior riding into battle. Sagittarius is fire, it's the centaur. Mars is the soldier. So if you put the centaur and the soldier together, you're going to get some movement, right? So um, do I progress in a practical sense? Or do I explore the realms of spirit? Or do I try and combine them in some way? I get a sense of frustration. It doesn't quite fit. Um, the Pisces moon also sex... Oh, these bells. Oh, my God. What's, what's worse? If I get up and close the door and come back? Or if I just keep... I, I'll just keep talking. The Pisces moon sextiles Uranus and Taurus. So that's nice because the Pisces moon gives you this very sensitive ability to look at what could be. And Uranus and Taurus creates change in your practical life, right? So you're able to see what could be and you're able to 
like pick up things that other people will miss it's like you like going to an antiques fair right or a flea market or something and you've got some knowledge about antiques and what's worth something and what isn't and you can spot them whereas other people just walk by and say okay more costume jewelry or a, an old piece of furniture you'll know that it's like you know a, an, a french antique or something and that's the way you're able to see things here you're able to see the value and opportunity and things that other people will miss the sun is also in capricorn so you're very focused with that to realize your own ideas and hopes and dreams and to give them some sort of practical voice i'm sorry i'm just going to close this excuse me Okay, Friday the 7th of January. No, I haven't even looked at that. No, yeah, yeah, Thursday I have to do first. So the sex has Uranus and Taurus and the Sun in Capricorn. Um, so on Thursday, with all this friction and this sense of not being at ease, you may entertain some bad ideas that will lead you back into the past. So old habits could come up today, like old behaviors, you know, that you've, that you've outgrown. But they may come back in today to just kind of check if you're still going to fall for the same old behavior or if you've you've left it behind for good so like someone offering you a cigarette you know for instance you stop smoking other times it doesn't bother you on this day you may just question whether you should just have that one cigarette and it's interesting i heard something the other day which was um one time is no time <laughs> and i was appalled to hear that because it's the exact opposite to the philosophy of the 12 step recovery kind of groups because they say one is too many and a thousand is never enough so you shouldn't have the first drink or the first smoke or whatever because that's what kicks it off right and when i heard that i was like god that is so harmful to say one time is no time you can just deny it and it didn't happen no 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 no, no. don't buy into that kind of stuff it's no good um and the, I'm biased, of course, but I would say the 12-step people have got the right idea about it. Also, weirdly, um, someone may need your help on Thursday the 6th. So if you can give that help, if you have the, the time and the capacity to do it, please show up and support and help out because it's going to work out really well for everyone involved. And that's the kind of moment where you can really solidify a relationship with someone. Like I've, had, I've got a friend, she's done a couple of things for me in life showed up at certain crucial moments and she can do no wrong you know like because of that she's got so many brownie points with me that even if she behaves horribly or says things to me which <laughs> she can do no wrong it's weird like it's a completely different st i hold her to a completely different standard than i do other people and i'm aware of it but it's because of these kind of memories i've got Friday, the 7th of January, we've got the Pisces moon forming a conjunction with Neptune and Pisces. Okay, so we've really jumped into the deep end of the swimming pool here. We're all water now, all love, all feelings, all intuition. Sextiles, Pluto and Capricorn, so my feelings, I want them to lead to change. Venus and Capricorn and the sun in Capricorn. I really like this, you know, it's, it's like hanging out with I don't, um, when I was a, when I was at school or something, I had this friend who was an engineer and he was so, um, serene and placid and like in his spare time, he liked to play chess or, or play with his little, um, you know, those circuit things they have, the science people, they're like welder or solder or something, these, these circuits together and they light a light bulb or something. And he went sailing and he did all these like really, um, nice simple things and it was just so soothing to be around him it's like you know this is really i know where i'm at with you you're reliable and it's comfortable and i can trust you and it's that kind of really simple yeah trustworthy a straightforward honest energy it's like having um tuna and rice you know it's simple it's straightforward it's nice it's it, it doesn't stress you out that's the kind of vibe i get here on friday then we have the pisces moon forming a square with mars and sagittarius okay so we still have a little bit of friction via the pisces moon now being artificially heated by mars and sagittarius and that may just make you a little bit restless or ill at ease so um with all the water and that little bit of friction here um 
some of the practicality has now fallen away a little bit. Ultimately, I think you're going to feel a little flatter on Friday the 7th than you have all week. And you may want to change the scenery as a result. So the creative things of Capricorn are now coming into effect. So if you're able to go see a new exhibition or to have a massage or to go walking by the river, please do that. It'll recharge you and it'll lift your mood very quickly and easily. And um, plans for the future will give you a lot to look forward to. I think that's the way, best way to use the Mars and Pisces moon energy. Um, so use all of that introspective mindset to make a decision about a trip or holiday. Where would you like to go? What would you like to experience? On Saturday, the 8th of January, we've got the moon going into Aries at 326 in the morning. So the, the energy shifts quite a, a lot. <laughs> Pisces is the last sign of the zodiac. And Aries is the first sign of the zodiac. So Pisces says, okay, I'm getting ready for the next life and I'm reviewing and I'm questioning what's come before. And, you know, and Aries is like, I was just born and I want to bulldoze my way into the world and make it mine. It's very different. So the Aries moon now kind of pushes you to jump on a horse and to go galloping. The Aries moon conjuncts Chiron in Aries, the wounded healer in Aries, says following my own self-interest is the best course of action always. <laughs> so you're a little bit more focused about getting your way now. It sextiles Mercury in Aquarius. So you do have still an appreciation for the wisdom of other people and what you can learn and, and communication and innovation solo or as a group. And it's exile Saturn and Aquarius. So you don't just have an appreciation for groupthink. You want to be in the think tank and make a contribution to innovate. Yeah, I'm just thinking how wonderful it must be to be like a scientist, you know, um, someone like the person who invents, what is it like um, self-sustaining energy, you know, like in science fiction films that have this fusion process or something. And then they have this little sun that exists on its own and it just... Um, is strong enough to power like uh, the electricity for the whole planet. Anything is possible and that kind of thing is going to uh, solve so many problems. Just imagine being able to do that for billions of people to have such a positive influence or to to come up with a you know vaccine or to do something that's really going to impact the lives of every other human being on the planet. I just think that kind of thing is just so awe-inspiring and, and amazing. And I'm talking about it. Why? Why am I talking about it? Because Mercury in Aquarius allows you to innovate something on that kind of humanitarian level. And Saturn in Aquarius, even more so, you're able to become an institution as such via one of your ideas. The Capricorn Sun conjuncts Venus in Capricorn. So... I work, therefore I am, and I love it. So the vibe does change, and you're more interested, particularly in taking action. You're more action-focused than reflection-minded. That doesn't make sense. So you'd rather do something and get going, <clears throat> and you'd much, you're much less likely to enjoy sitting there and reflecting and meditating on Saturday. It's like, what can I do? So you want to try out something new, especially if it involves technology. So try out, you know, like the little, not the little, the, the project you're working on or the invention that you want to create. Or go try out the artificial ski slope that they've built at the local shopping center near the city you live in. Or the new phone you've been eyeing that's got a better camera and it'll allow you to make better videos, you know, that kind of stuff. If you need equipment for a new project, basically, it's a good day to shop for it. Making storyboard boards for an advert or film or planning an event will be really easy. Anything that involves other people where you're getting organized, superb. Sunday, the 9th of January, finally, we've got the Aries moon forming a square with Pluto and Capricorn. So I want to blow things up. I want to, I want to make life super interesting. Not easy. I want to make problems for myself just because it signals change. So that's dangerous because you want sake for the sake, you want change for the sake of sake, not because it's constructive or positive. And that's the kind of thing where you can just, you know, blow up a relationship or walk out the door for no real reason other than like a three second sense of satisfaction. It's no good. That's kind of old behavior. I think that you um, ought to 
look at carefully and not indulge in. It's just not productive. The Aries moon also um, squares the sun in Capricorn and Venus in Capricorn. So it's much better to work at creating change in a tangible real world sense. So changing the way you live, the routine of your life, your environment, yep, in a constructive way is going to be much more productive than saying, I want to get rid of this, which is the vibe I get between the Pluto and Aries square, um, Pluto and Moon and Aries square, rather. The Aries moon also trines Mars and Sagittarius, so I want to go on an adventure really, really, and it sextiles Saturn and Aquarius, but certain things may hold me back, and I appreciate that, but I certainly don't like it. So it complicates things a little bit in terms of your feelings and your relationships with other people. Mercury in Aquarius, then sextiles Chiron in Aries. So I want to look at a way of innovating something that's going to make my life better. I want to invent something for myself, so to speak. The one thing that I feel is kind of that became apparent to me reading between the lines here of this energy is that with all the friction and back and forth here, you may have a strong difference opinion with someone you trust and it may change your relationship. You may be like, wow, this person is reasonable and we've been friends for five years. How on earth could they think that? Have they lost their mind? You know, and that's disappointing. <laughs> so try not to jump to conclusions like, have you lost your mind? And attempt to see the other person's point of view. It's a teachable moment so you can learn a lot about relationships. And also you may discover information from an unusual source. You know, people think differently than you do and it sometimes may be annoying and it may cause conflict, but other times it means they discover things that you couldn't possibly because they're operating in a totally different way and they expose themselves to different questions and um, circumstances. So having contact, with, uh, having contact with the outside world is gonna be, uh, it's gonna benefit you massively uh, you'll you'll learn new things and it may also give you some new ideas which then you can do something about. So like I said, it looks like a really positive, nice, uplifting week. I hope you have a wonderful time. If you would like a personal reading with me, um, in my personal readings, I use astrology and tarot and numerology and I combine all three divination systems to give you answers. So if you're if you want to get to know yourself a little better, what your strengths and talents are, or if you want to look at what weaknesses to avoid, or what's destined for you in certain areas of your life, or what you can do about those things, like work and love and money and travel and where you live and colleagues. Also, if you want to see what's coming up in future, I look at your progress chart, your transits, and I use the tarot for that. And we can look at what's coming up over the next few months and years. You know, what areas are supported by the astrology, where you're likely to thrive and where you have to do a little bit more work and, and then things which are coming into your life which are maybe unexpected or it's kind of get, getting a glimpse into what could be and how to 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 realize that um also if you're thinking of moving or locations are a big question for you i use astrocartography to look at different parts of the world and how they influence you specifically so if you have any questions at all and you want me to answer them for you then please do get in touch with me for a personal reading it's gregoryscott.com. On the front page, scroll down a little bit until you get to the book your reading button. Click on that to order your reading with me and um, we can get that booked in. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, please hit subscribe and share the video online. Please do share the videos. It helps the channel grow and expand. So I would really appreciate that. Have an amazing week and I'll see you for the daily tower readings. The, the special videos I do for the new moons and the full moons. By the way, on Sunday, the 2nd of January, we had a uh, new moon in Capricorn. We did. Yeah. <laughs> we had a new moon in Capricorn, and I, I made a video on that. And um, so have a look at that. It, we still feel the influence strongly here on Monday, Tuesday. So if you want more information on the new moon, check that out. Have an amazing week, and I'll speak to you soon.